It's Wednesday once again, so you know what that means. Pop Does Presents. I am your host, Decent, and my guest at this time was recently featured at the most illustrious showcase in all of New York City. I'm kidding. It was only our showcase. But stop by, rock the house, and now he's here on the couch to kick it with me and talk some music and things. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for Joy Marone. Woo! Husband, oh, hold up. I said, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Joy Marone. Woo! Together. Next week, you guys are all fired. Oh, Jordy, yes. how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you doing? It's a fly ass jacket, man. Thank you. <laughs> taking it back, you know what I'm saying? Very, very Wu Tang of you, but you know. Yes, I'm from Staten Island, so. That's why. I'm gotta represent. You call that a segue in the biz, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, Jordan, mm -hmm. thank you for stopping by once again. Like I said, you rocked out at the Pop Dust Showcase mm -hmm. last month, did your thing. How was that whole experience, to be completely honest? Just was... as long as you say it was good, that's the only thing I care about. <laughs> no, it was amazing. The turnout was great. People definitely rocked out with me and everything. It was a, it was a great experience. Yeah, now yeah. you're here to get more in depth about some of your tunes and you know your whole background. So, so um, first of all, tell people a little bit about you know your sound, like you know your yeah. upbringing, you know your influences, all that good stuff. Just get right um, into it, man. Well, my mother, she grew up playing piano. My father, he played fiddle guitar a little bit. Nice. Um, but the main inspiration was uh, my brother. He started, uh, he got into rap when he was like, uh, I'd say 14 and stuff. Yeah. We're seven years apart, so I was young. I was involved in it. Uh, we made a um, recording studio out of our garage and stuff. So I was just involved in basically hip hop. And then through the time, I looked through my parents' records and the inspirations came from every angle. And yeah. Yeah, she got a big and build and stuff. What's yes. up, man? Thanks for stopping by as well. So all these different influences, all this you know musical history, I want to say that's you know running through your veins right now. How are you able to take all of that and cultivate the sound and the image and the swag that is Jordan Brown? There's many inspirations from the records I listened to. My mom was a big '70s fan. Mm. My dad was a big like, '60s fan, and um, I'd like to blend the hip hop with classical piano and pop and R&B influences as well. That's dope. But a lot of people tend to overlook the fact that if you take a little of those elements, they all kind of, you know, intertwine, yeah, yeah. you know, a little bit, because, you know, 70s, you know, that was pretty much the era that kind of ushered in hip-hop a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Just so some of, like, the melodies and stuff that you even the get The drum from, breaks, too. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some of the melodies and stuff that you get from music from the 60s ultimately became, like, a lot of dope samples for hip-hop as well, and for you to take a classical spin on that, mm -hmm. you know. Because you know Beethoven had bars, right? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, nothing new under the sun, you know, Beethoven, he was getting it. Uh -huh. So it's so dope that you kind of paid homage and brought that back. Totally kidding, totally kidding. So what was your start as an artist? You know, once again, you got the influence, mm -hmm. you know, you did your homework, you know, Big Bro kind of, you know, broke you into the game a little bit. When did you go, you know what, I'm going to do this? What was that one moment? Um, well, the first track that I ever I rapped on first, was a track when I was nine years old that he, my brother, he just made me rap on and stuff. And we had a song together. It was like about, um, you know, big bro, little bro situation and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time where I experienced it. And I was like, oh, this is cool, whatever. But um, it wasn't until like I was around 18, uh, I got involved in music, started um, doing audio engineering and stuff and working with other artists. But uh, it took a long time, around five years or so, to really find my voice. And I found my voice because I felt there were things that I liked in the music that I would tell the artists while I was engineering or producing them. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was so great and they weren't using some of my ideas. So I started fudging them out, getting drafts done, giving people a whole track and be like, use this. They wouldn't use it, so I just used it for myself. And now I have whole EP done and stuff and you know, working on things towards my album and everything. And yeah, yeah. definitely this year started blowing up with my music. Interesting thing about your story is that you were actually a mentor by probably one of the most infamous hip hop engineers in history, Young Guru. You know, after a while it became work for you, but to sit back and go, yo, like this is Young Guru. How did that all happen to um, begin with? So I got a, a fellowship. It was called Mixed with the Masters. And it's an experience where they pick um, 14 other engineers from around the world and uh, you all end up in a mansion in France. Mm -hmm. So I had to fly out to France, go to the south of France, and then I end up in this mansion, and uh, they have a week-long seminar with a famous audio engineer. And I happened to get one with the young guru. So um, I learned a lot from him. He opened up the, uh, some of the little Jay-Z sessions and stuff. And I saw like uh, Swiss Speed stuff, Rick Rubin stuff. I heard like Jay-Z's vocals um, you know, dry and everything. It was just crazy hearing a lot of stuff. 
after that week was up, I went back to New York, and he, he's in Jersey, that's where he resides now. So we were very close to each other, and I wound up helping him being the uh, community relations manager for his uh, Era of Engineer um, campaign. And he does these master classes and stuff for other engineers and everything. So I started booking venues for him, going to the venues and everything, and he would teach me little things here and there as we went along and stuff. And yeah, that's how I got to experience all that. Are you hiring? <laughs> Like I can, um, I can do something. Like you know, I can, you know. Like, I definitely need help right now. It's just I, me and my brother doing everything. We're sending all the emails, all that I stuff, can, and it's well, of course. I, I can go shopping for your jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can do that. You know. Definitely. I don't feel like that's a that's a. I feel like you hold a higher purpose. Though. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just saying. Though, like I got, I gotta make sure that you stay fly. <laughs> like you know, the image is everything. But seriously, so you have so much experience. You know, once again from all different walks of life at such a young age, you know. What was the first, I want to say, Jordan Barone song where you knew that you found it, like you went, mm -hmm. aha, the Eureka moment, so to speak. What was the first Jordan Barone song that you can attribute? The first, so I had a lot of drafts that I was making throughout the years of being an engineer, mm -hmm. but the first song that I actually had finished uh, had to be my first single, which was the same thing mm -hmm. that I released back in June. And that was like the first one that I finished um, because I received a grant actually from uh, Staten Island Arts, which is like a, a borough, um, uh, government funded program for our borough. And uh, I got a couple thousand dollars to put towards my first project, so I started taking it seriously, writing more, and same thing, that was the first song that I knew like I had something going on with it. See, you didn't even realize that I set you up, man. <laughs> you didn't even realize it. But yeah, tell the people about the same thing, because okay. it's a banger. Um, Definitely a banger. And once again, we talked a little bit, you know, off camera about, you know, just having that ear for you know a specific kind of sound so how did the whole record and the whole inception come together one of the reasons why i started writing was because i was going through a breakup as most people do exactly <laughs> i had to had to let my heart out in some way so I, I i made the the beat first that's how it usually starts i'll make the beat and it was very melancholy and sad and um, i started just writing some lyrics and stuff and a lot of my hooks they start off as a joke so i was just coming up with like oh same thing same thing and I was like, I'll never use that or whatever. And when I wrote the verses and had to come back to the hook, uh, my brother and I, we both talked about it and we were like, well, that's catchy. Same thing's kind of cool and everything. How can we relate that to the verses and stuff? And uh, we just came up with, you know, same thing is about, it's, it draws from one experience, but also all the other experiences that come from uh, after the breakup, before the breakup, and how everything just relates back to the same thing of like, you know, you're hurt right now. Um, you don't want to give yourself, you don't, you're don't. you afraid to love. Uh, all that stuff that embodies the breakup and just you, you end up in the same place and you got to be right with yourself yeah. <laughs> um, yeah 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 all that all that um. but I tried to make it as catchy as possible and not as sad as, as, as I was at that time yeah because yeah. you know but you got to get your Drake on you know you got to be you got to be able to make people dance in the club uh -huh. and cry at the same time. Yeah, Drake's, Drake's a master. Like, oh my god, I miss him. This is too turd. This is, this is too turd. So, we, we need that in the cell. We need, we need the trap emo. So, you definitely, you definitely bring in that vibe. So, how dope is it that, you know, your brother helped you, you know, get your start, and now he's pretty much, you know, your right hand man and everything. You know, what's that dynamic like? He, he's walked me through this whole process basically um, and he has like a very uh, DIY attitude mm -hmm. when it comes to all this stuff so whatever it was it was like okay we can we can pay for the studio do this do that whatever mm -hmm. but if you learn it then you don't have to pay anything you yeah. know, just have that knowledge all the time so we, we bought our own equipment um, we spent time learning everything and we just we just want to embody as much as we can in mm -hmm. ourselves and that's something that he definitely taught me and I, I take that to the grave and stuff and um, yeah, he's just over there. Every decision that we make, I have to consult with him. Everything that we do is always us together. It's not just me by myself. He helps with the image, the music, all that stuff. So, yeah. Is there ever an instance where, like, you want him to be <laughs> less of a brother and more of just, like, you know, a business partner and vice versa? Uh, we, we, we bicker <laughs> back and forth a lot, almost every day. But um, it's always for the conclusion of, like, he wants what's best for me and I want what's best for me. And, you know, we go back and forth, but that's the end goal. Yeah. So there's never a situation where you guys are like arguing over a song and you go, that's why you peed the bed when you were eight. There's <laughs> definitely <laughs> situations like that. And good man, Stefan. Always play the big brother card. Big brother to big brother, I totally get it. You gotta make sure you keep him in the headlock no matter how old he is. 
there's always like the because because he's obviously older than me, so there's always like the trust me factor mm -hmm. where like I'll I'll come up with something, he'll come up with something, and we fight about which one's the right way to go, like in a song, like a decision, like with arrangement or something like that, and um, he'll, he'll be like he'll, he'll bang on the, on the couch and be like, trust me, trust me, I've been around, I played these records, he's a DJ, so he's, he's used to everything, and he'll be adamant about it, and I don't always want to do it, but when I do it. The end result is always amazing. So yeah, but I think that's more of a testament to you know how much he wants to see you succeed mm -hmm. as you know his younger brother. The fact yeah. that he's able to you know be so passionate, but also at the same time remove his ego from the situation. Uh -huh. You honestly couldn't ask for a better person to have in your corner. So once exactly. again, shout out to Stefan and for everything that you're doing for this young man. It's gonna um, be hard finding a manager. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's gonna want to fight him, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna win every time. He's your brother. <laughs> But um, talk to us about some of the other tunes that you got, you know, mm -hmm. in the stash, or, like out right now that the people may or may not be aware of. Okay, so um, I just released a single on November sixteenth. It's called Up Tonight, and uh, that's more of like a contemporary trap ballad. We yeah, call it. yeah. Um, and that's just me, like saying, like, look, I don't have all the swag that some dudes may have and stuff, and I don't always know what to say. But if you leave this party with me, I'm gonna show you like a good time and. And show you experiences that you've never seen before and stuff. And that's what that song is about. It's about going up tonight, not trying to bring anyone down. It's, yeah. See, you describing that song makes me like it a little bit less just because I feel like it's very, very misleading. Because for you to say that you don't have the swag as most dudes have is, is a blatant lie. And it's true, though. I'm just a regular dude. But no, Jordan, Jordan, trust me. Okay? Uh, trust me. Trust me. All right? All right? The jacket, you know, it's your, it's your thing, man. Like, who can resist? Who could resist a fly ass dude coming to them in a bubble jacket, even if it is in the summertime, saying, hey, yo, let's get out of here. It takes a lot of confidence, man. So that song right there, I feel like, really does speak to who you are as, you know, Jordan Brown. Like, you give off this impression that you're just, like, super cool, super chill, but I can take your girl. And it makes me feel a little bit, makes me feel a little bit self-conscious, so... My girlfriend is going to be watching this interview, just so we can avoid all of that. Okay. But, so we're going to close this out, we're going to, you know, it's going to be a tag team, you know, okay. kind of thing, all right? Uh -huh. All right, ready? All right. I'm Decent and this is... Jordan Barone. And his single... Up Tonight. And his other single... Same Thing. ...are out right now, and you can catch his project coming out... Top of 2019. And his best friend in the whole world is... I'm supposed to say Decent. <laughs> Decent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jordan Barone. Woo! <laughs> Once again, I am Decent. This has been another edition of Pop Dust Presents. Make sure you follow us on all social media at Pop Dust. Make sure you visit our website at popdust.com. Subscribe to our YouTube and make sure you click that little bell at the top so you can be notified of brand new content going up. And we will see you next time. Peace. Peace.